Good morning and welcome. My name is Sharon Hodgson and I am the Dean of Ivy Business School. And before we get started, I thought we would start with a land acknowledgement. I acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississauga of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississauga of the Credit. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today to announce and celebrate what I consider to be an absolutely landmark gift of $3.5 million from BMO Financial to Ivy and Western for purpose-driven leadership. Thanks to this gift from BMO, the Ivy Business School and the Ian Ianatowitz Institute of Leadership will create three spectacular things. The first is a new cross-campus leadership certificate that will be available to all Western students. The second, and I'll speak a bit more about this, our Hallmark elective, which is Leadership Under Fire, will be doubled in capacity. It is our highest demand elective within the leadership curriculum. And so we'll be able to double the capacity of that program. And the third is some new programming that will be developed and available digitally to support small and medium businesses across the community to get access to our leadership programming. The Ian Ianatowitz Institute is the center of experiential learning, thought leadership, and outreach, examining what makes better leaders. Ivy is playing a leading role globally in demonstrating how leader character and purpose-driven leadership are essential to building a more just and equitable world and sustained excellence for individuals, organizations, and society. Ivy is the only business school in Canada that situates leader character as the foundation of our leadership research agenda, our approach to teaching, and it is the very ethos of the school and what the brand is most proud of. Leader character is built into our student code of conduct, recognizing that character is an indispensable component of good citizenship, good leadership, and good scholarship. I believe that BMO's purpose to boldly grow the good in business and life is in perfect alignment with the Institute's objectives. BMO's focus on driving positive change for customers, employees, and the communities where they operate. Doing so will deliver value beyond the bottom line and create opportunities to accelerate positive change. This focus not only seems to fit seamlessly with the strategic aims that guide the Institute, but also fits very well with Ivy's new purpose, which is inspiring leaders for a sustainable and prosperous world. This landmark gift advances Ivy's leadership programming beyond the school and into the wider Western community, further expanding the Institute's mission of developing global citizens who have the strength of character strive to make a difference and contribute to flourishing of teams, organizations, and societies. To have the most impact on society, it is clear that developing purpose-driven leaders of tomorrow must extend beyond the business schools and encompass future leaders in medicine, engineering, media, technology, law, politics, and many more. Leader character development transcends disciplines. That is why all undergraduates at Western are eligible for what we expect to be very highly coveted 75 seats in our program. And our goal is to take this unique program and make it available to more Western students over time with increased donor engagement in the future. Students in the program will develop their leadership with a sense of justice, humanity, with a common, informed understanding of purpose-driven leadership, thereby creating better citizens, better leaders, better organizations, and in turn, a better world. They will graduate better prepared and more confident to lead in whatever career path they choose. 
In addition to the new certificate, BMO's gift will immediately double the capacity of our leadership under fire, developing leader character. This program was developed by Professor Gerard Seitz and Lynn Purdy, alongside retired military leaders Dave Quick and Paul Carroll, EMBA 16s. The elective is modeled after basic officer training, and it's a five-day program combines the best of military leadership principles with real-world business application. The course is one of Ivy's HBA program's most unique and transformative electives, and it is consistently oversubscribed and highly rated. So to double the capacity is absolutely fantastic because the students are on us all the time to do this. <laughs> This transformative gift will also help to enhance the Institute's outreach to small and medium businesses as well as nonprofits through the creation of a purpose driven leadership playbook. It will be a digital resource that distills the Institute's research on leader character and provide a practical approach to embedding character within an organization. It will allow small and medium businesses to benefit from the school's work and learn how to elevate their organizational purpose by leveraging the principles of character leadership. We believe that BMO is the perfect partner to help disseminate this information to business and nonprofits who may not have access to this type of programming like other larger institutions have. We're incredibly grateful to BMO for their generosity and value their partnership. In fact, Western and Ivy enjoy an incredibly long and enduring relationship with BMO Financial Group. For more than a century, BMO has been the university's bank and a long-standing donor. BMO and its entities have generously donated over $9.5 million to Western and Ivy to date, including their support for the Richard Ivy building in the auditorium in the Ivy Center. 640 seats, by the way, we're expanding that, so just heads up. <laughs> and most recently investing in Ivy's Women in Asset Management program. In total, 580 alumni are employed at BMO Financial Group, and 260 of them hold degrees from Ivy. Many of our alumni also serve in top management positions, and BMO employees are particularly involved with Ivy. Remember, Global Ivy Day is always hosted at BMO, May 11th this year. They also serve on advisory boards across the school and generously give their time and expertise and financial support. Just to name a few of the outstanding leaders, George Cope, HBA 84, LLD 12 is the chairman of the board, Daryl White, HBA 94, CEO, and Mona Malone, HBA 94, Chief Human Resource Officer and Head of People and Culture. Thank you for your continued interest and support of Ivy. This extraordinary investment by BMO will allow the Institute of Leadership to grow and amplify our research and our impact, while boldly contributing to positive change in the area of leadership development in business and in life. I would like now to invite Connor Chapman, HBA 23 candidate, to thank BMO and to speak a bit about the impact of this gift. Connor has taken both the Leadership Under Fire program and Learning from Leaders and is well on his way to understand the importance of leader character. Come on up, Connor. So my name is Connor Chapman and I am a graduating senior at the Ivy Business School. During my time at Western, I've had the opportunity to play on their varsity football team, and I was also elected my section president by my fellow peers. I've always had the desire to lead, and taking these courses, I feel, has greatly developed that ability in myself. During my leadership under fire experience, I had the opportunity to lead peers, and it revealed the blind spots and areas for improvement that I had within my leadership. In leadership under fire, among other things, I was able to see and experience how gender dynamics interplayed within a task and I got valuable feedback from military heroes. In learning from leaders, I got to listen in on advice from folks who I can only aspire to become. Listening to those top executives left me with many valuable insights that I can use to shape my own career. On top of this, Gerard Seitz assigned to me the only paper that has ever changed my life. I wrote a 9,000 word reflection paper based on my experiences at Leadership Under Fire. I wrote about the root causes of the issues that I face. I wrote about what I learned from my time in the field, and I wrote about how, how I will implement these lessons into my own life. 
In preparation for this event, I read back my paper and it brought me to tears. I cannot imagine that there are many other courses offered at any university that have touched a student's heart in the way that Leadership Under Fire touched mine. Gerard Seitz and the Leadership Institute are doing massively important work in my opinion. The Institute challenged me to look deep within myself and face what I saw. I worked at BMO's Vancouver office this summer and I can tell you with a lot of confidence that I was able to be a better follower and in some ways leader because of the learnings that I took from these courses. I am confident that this generous gift from BMO will allow for many students like myself to develop their character-based leadership and eventually bravely lead the world in a positive direction. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I'm Madeline Shepard. I'm the president of Western. Pleasure to be with you and to see so many uh, smiling faces. So BMO employs a substantial number of Western graduates and about two thirds of those graduates are Ivy graduates. And probably many of you are in the room and you're gonna hear in a moment from Mona Malone who might be responsible, I'm not sure, for, <laughs> your, for your presence here today. <laughs> I wanted to say that your alma mater, for those of you who are graduates of Western, is having an absolutely excellent year. We've come out of the pandemic well and our students are thrilled to be back in person. They were mostly in person all the way through the pandemic. We tried to distinguish Western's approach to, the, uh, to what happened to all of us uh, from other universities, and I think we did a good job of that. I want to say a couple words about um, being an undergraduate student. You just heard from Connor, and um, I've said this a couple of other places, but it's absolutely true. This is the best time, this is the bad news for you. This is the best time to be an undergraduate student in the history of higher education. Like for the last thousand years, it's been pretty rote, you memorize stuff, you listen to a professor lecture, you write an exam, you go home. And that's been changing even in the course of my career, um, but it's really accelerating these days. And a gift like this will help that acceleration and plays directly into what's happening now, which is a focus on things like entrepreneurship, leadership, character, and other elements that go beyond kind of memorizing a set of facts. So synthesizing, writing clearly, speaking effectively, all those things that you know you need in your daily lives. Um, the entrepreneurship piece is extremely important to us. I'll say more about that in just a moment. As Sharon's just highlighted, um, BMO and Western have a long history together, uh, more than a century. And I think BMO must have been started surely in Montreal. And when I was working in Montreal, I knew of many of your executives uh, who were based there as well. And I was hired by one of them, actually, by Jacques Menard, the late Jacques Menard. It's a point of pride for us that so many of our graduates uh, are members of the BMO uh, senior team, and um, that's part of what makes today's announcement special for us. This comes at an opportune time for Western and for Ivy because we are expanding through the uh, Inatowitz Leadership Institute and through the Pierre Morissette Entrepreneurship Institute. We are expanding horizontally across the institution to try and engage all students in these really important topics ways of seeing the world, ways of thinking. We're, we're convinced that that will lead to their future success and the future success of our alumni and the university. We did a plan, a strategic plan. Uh, I can talk to you guys about strategic plans because you probably like them, but <laughs> my academic colleagues don't like them. Uh, and we managed to do it anyway, and Sharon was actually instrumental in helping me get it across the finish line. It's called Towards Western at 150. We tried to make it not boring and uh, it's tricky. And, and one, of the, one of the elements there was um, around entrepreneurship and around leadership. So regardless of whatever issues uh, students are dealing with, faculty are dealing with, what they will deal with as alumni out in the working world, um, we know that um, preparation along those lines really matters. And strong and stable democracies, like we still enjoy here in Canada, also depend on people with the kind of leadership character that is, um, that is built. It's something it's you don't inherit it, it's built by your experiences, your knowledge, your family life, your university experience. So as Sharon said, we're going to be able to expand the program. We're thrilled. Probably the 75 who get in will still be the envy of their peers because there will be people be left behind. Um, and that's, uh, that's uh, never good. Uh, I wanted to say a couple words about the uh, Inatowitz Institute, led by uh, Duzia Vera, who we're going to hear from in a moment and uh, thank uh, Duzia and all the people who have come before her in making this a great institute at the university. These institutes, they bring visibility 
to what's happening. Uh, if you're like flying over Western and you look down, you can see them glowing, right? Like that's what happens. Like they bring, they bring visibility to the work that's being done. Thank you again to BMO, to the senior team for this uh, generous gift. And now I want to introduce Amona Malone, who's going to speak to you in just a moment. She is, as you know, the Chief Human Resources Officer. She's the Head of People and Culture. I love that title especially for a BMO Financial Group. She's a member of the Executive Committee. And after, can I say 20 years at BMO? Is that it's okay? <laughs> yeah. uh, she continues to help shape the bank's growth strategy through its most valuable asset, which is you. She's an Ivy HBA graduate, class of, uh, I want to say, I was going to make you much older, 94. I was going to make her 84. That would have been bad, huh? Uh, she serves on uh, the Ivy Advisory Board, and she also serves as the chair of the Advisory Council for the Inatoa Institute of Leadership. Uh, Mona, we're so grateful for your leadership, and please come forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alan, for that kind introduction, and uh, thank you, Sharon and Connor. Um, Connor, we believe at BMO, no matter what stage you are in your leadership journey, it's important to reflect, and I think you so beautifully summed it up. And so I know you are embarking um, just at the start of your career, but I'm sure it's going to breed lots of success with the insights that you've learned already, so thank you. This is a proud day for me and welcome. First, it is great to see everyone in person. It is wonderful to connect. You can feel the energy in the room and thank you so much for all being here. Um, as a student in the HBA program, it shaped me in many ways, whether it was the 48 hour assignments, the content that I learned or the lifelong friendships that I formed. And through my career, uh, BMO was my second employer, I really learned the importance of um, connection and this concept that we're talking about around purpose, the impact that leaders can have um, within an organization, within the community, and the power of that. And then in more recent years, reconnecting with Ivy in terms of, as Alan mentioned, um, the role on the advisory board and connected with the Leadership Institute. And I'm so incredibly impressed with the research that Ivy is doing and the applicability to the business community. And I think that's what motivates me most when I think about the leadership character research and the attributes around, um, around humility, for example, and what's happening in the world today, how much trust is an issue, whether you look at leaders in government, in, uh, in the corporate environment, and how important this concept of character and purpose are, not just today, but in the generation ahead. So we deeply believe at BMO that leadership character is critical. You don't have to look further than our four values, integrity, empathy, diversity, and responsibility. And as Sharon so beautifully highlighted, our purpose, boldly grow the good in business and life. Because we know that it is not just what we do within the walls or the virtual walls of BMO. It's the impact that we have more broadly, the impact to a thriving economy, the impact to an inclusive future, an inclusive society, and the impact to a sustainable future. And that comes not only with the business decisions that we make, but it comes based on the interaction with our clients. It's the interaction with each other and the impact that we have with the broader communities in which we live. Sharon outlined a number of the BMO alumni at all levels from the board um, that we all share the impact that Western and Ivy has had on our own career, the strength of the connections that were formed during that time, the strength of the education that we got that allowed us to start our business careers. And I want to highlight one in particular, the legendary Donald K. Johnson that's sitting in the front row right here. The, the former vice chairman of BMO Nesbitt Burns and one of the most powerful philanthropists in Canada 
and deeply committed to Ivy. So Don, it's a real honor to have you here this morning. What I am most excited about with this gift is the ability to spark interest, as Connor highlighted today, in young people, to spark interest in the power of reflection and thinking about the impact they have as leaders on those around them. And that's what this program, Leadership Under Fire, does. And so by increasing the number of people that it reaches, we are increasing that spark in young people. The second aspect of this gift is the playbook to small business, small and medium-sized business. And BMO has been deeply committed to business banking since the inception of our bank. We actually have Mike Bonner, the Senior Vice President of Business Banking, and Steve Murphy, the Senior Vice President and Head of Distribution and Personal and Business Banking. And I, I am so proud of the work that our colleagues do every day with small business across Canada. And this is going to provide a playbook to those businesses on the concept of leadership character. And often, as a small business, you don't have the resources. You don't have a people and culture department. You don't have an HR department. And so the idea of being able to provide leading research to these businesses will help Canada. It will help entrepreneurship, and it will help the prosperity of the Canadian economy. And that is something that we're deeply committed to. And then the third aspect about this gift is being able to take the leadership character learnings across Western campus. And the idea today of business problems being more complex and needing multidisciplinary approaches to solving them, whether that comes from business, government, or not-for-profit. And when you think about whether somebody's studying in medicine, in engineering, in communications, the idea of being able to spread across that leadership learning across the faculties is something that I think is so innovative and being led by Alan and the entire team at Western and Sharon. And I think that the ability for BMO to help fuel that vision will create stronger leadership in every faculty of Western graduates. So those are some of the reasons why I am so excited about this gift and just really see this as a further step forward in deepening the partnership that Ivy, Western, and BMO have that I know will deeply continue. So with that, I'm going to transition to the next part of our program, which is really the fun stuff in terms of learning a little bit more about leadership character. So thank you. Good morning, my name is Lucia Vera and I am the Executive Director of the Ian Oinatovich Institute for Leadership. First of all, I wanna thank Sharon, Alan, Mona, Connor for your remarks this morning and I wanna thank everybody at BMO for your significant support to Western, to Ivy, to the Institute for Leadership and to our work. We look forward to implementing uh, this gift and we look forward to enhancing the learning of our Western students and our Ivy students and also to bring our work to this new audience which as Mona mentioned are the small and medium enterprises. Let me tell you a little bit about us and then we will get into a uh, leader character ideas. Since its creation in 2010, the Ian Oinatovich Institute for Leadership has been at the center of leadership thought and education into what is an effective leader, and we focus particularly on leader character. The institute research is integrated into Ivy's degrees, executive education, programming, and we also do a wide range of outreach activities in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. The core of the institute is to elevate leader character alongside leader competence. And we support the idea of developing global citizens who have strength of character, <laughs> who strive to make a difference, and who contribute to the flourishing of teams, organizations, societies, and communities everywhere. Until now, the institute had three pillars. They were research, programming, and outreach. So we focus on 
uh, creating new knowledge. We embedded that knowledge in our programming so our students would have access to that new knowledge. And we also went to the community to, this, to, to communicate that knowledge everywhere we could. Thanks to this gift, Mona, now we have a fourth pillar, which is this idea of our cross-campus initiative. Uh, Alan, and we are excited to go and, and create more partnerships uh, across Western and working on that pillar. Let me tell you where everything began in terms of the research on leader character. If you think about it, Ivy has developed leaders for 100 years. But in 2008, things took a turn in the sense of asking the question with the global financial crisis of how could this happen? And if you think of this title, Leadership on Trial, Ivy professors decide to put leadership on trial. What is about leadership that led to that global financial crisis. And it was not just leadership on trial, it was business school on trial. IB professors you know, decided, reflected on these uh, participants of the global financial crisis are clearly competent. They have a lot of degrees. Most of them have business degrees, MBAs. What, is, what conversations are we having in business schools? Or what conversations are we not having in business schools so that every 10 to 15 years we fall into global financial crisis. The result of that research was this, this a report, Leadership on Trial, which summarized the failures of leadership that led to the financial crisis. The big takeaway was it was not a failure of competence, it was a failure to a great extent, a failure of character. We talk about the three C's of leadership at IB. Competence, character, and commitment. And this was one of the outcomes from this research. Competences, business schools are very good at teaching competences. We, we develop people competences, how our students you know, are gonna motivate people, how they're gonna work in teams. We're very good in organizational competence, thinking about culture, structure, systems, procedures, routines. We're excellent at business competences, finance, accounting, marketing, supply chain, HR. A strategic competence, how to create a strategy, how to implement a strategy. We also talk a lot about commitment, you know, the commitment to lead, the, the, the choice to lead, the engagement to lead, knowing that leading is hard work, sometimes it's lonely work. We don't talk so much, if you think about it, uh, until that um, turning point in, in, at Ivy with this research about character, character in business education, and even character in, in leadership conversations in society. The Ivy's uh, Leadership Institute changed that. Ivy's research has involved over 5,000, especially in the early years, over 5,000 um, interviews with executives in North America, the US and Canada, in the UK, in Hong Kong, asking that original question, what is it about leadership that led to global financial crisis? Everything started there and then the research has continued from there. People answered, you know, uh, not everybody mentioned the word character, but people did mention integrity or arrogance versus humility or recklessness or short-term orientation versus long-term orientation. And out of all those conversations with executives, this leader character framework was born. As you see here, it's 11 dimensions, judgment is in the middle, because when we talk about character, we are not talking about morals. We are not even talking about ethics. We talk about decision making. When we talk about character in business school, it is about decision making. Is it about critical thinking? It's about developing leaders with strong uh, judgment versus poor judgment. And you know, we always tell our students, think about a, a person you have met that you say, oh, this person really uh, clearly has poor judgment versus somebody that you're like, oh my goodness, this person has really good judgment, very strong judgment. That's what we are aiming for. That's what judgment is in the middle. Because developing these character dimensions uh, enhances, uh, strengthens judgment. And at the same time, judgment helps our leaders to decide which character dimensions needs to be used at a certain point in time. Some of these are very clearly related to effective leadership. If you look at here, drive, of course, leaders are driven courageous, you know, accountability, you know, North America has accountability as a strong value. Collaboration, everything that happens in organizations tends to happen in teams. Some of these dimensions, we get questions from, from executives or our students. What do you mean we need humility? Or what do you mean we need humanity? What is transcendence? Uh, what, what is temperance? So some of them seem to be counterintuitive at the beginning when we start talking about them. The one of these 11 that consistently 
is the lowest scored one. There is an instrument now uh, called the Leadership Character Insight Assessment that can be used to measure a uh, character both as a self-assessment as a 360 was developed by Ivy with the Sigma assessments. We apply that um, instrument to our students and also in different executive education programs. And, and it's used around the world by multiple business schools. But the consistently the lowest score I mentioned is temperance. So imagine, <laughs> imagine how being patient, calm, composed, self-controlled, and prudent would impact our decision making and our, and our judgment. So it's, it's, it's consistent. Um, none of these dimensions by themselves are sufficient. Somebody may say, oh, I am very driven and I am courageous. I have two. I am doing fine. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> because if you think about it, for example, authenticity. Somebody could say, you know, I strive to be authentic. I say what I think. You know, what you see is what you get. I'm always going to tell you what I think. But you could be authentically horrible to people, <laughs> you know? So authenticity needs compassion. Being brave by itself, you could be, we could be jumping off cliffs all the time because we were so brave. Uh, uh, being brave could lead to being uh, reckless. So courage needs temperance and prudence. Humility by itself could be passive. I could be very self-aware. I could be a continuous learning, and, but, but not get anything done. So humility needs drive. Drive. We can be very driven. That can lead to a leader being a bulldozer. So drive needs humanity and, and justice and, and humility and so on. So what we uh, uh, strive to communicate is that any of these by themselves are not enough. They need each other. They work together. So our, leader, our leadership development journey implies working on all of them and at the same time strengthening our judgment. Our research and the research of others on character has shown evidence of how this has an impact on outcomes such as innovation, corporate governance, a, a strong cultures, organizational transformation, and individual personal development. The topic today is character as a competitive edge. Character becomes a competitive edge in individuals as they become more aware of what character is and that it complements, it works together with our competences. We all want to be competent. Nobody, nobody here wants to be incompetent. But the idea is to understand how character and competence together really have a synergistic positive effect. Character can learn at any age, and Alan mentioned some of that. This myth that it, you know, our character is developed by the time we're five or seven or whatever age it is, it is a myth. Character is a muscle. Character can be practiced every day. It, it's a muscle that can be exercised. Of course, if muscles are not exercised, they atrophy. So that's, that's the, 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 the risk in that. Um, the more we exercise the different muscles then of character, then our, our judgment becomes stronger. Character also becomes a competitive advantage at the organizational level when it's embedded in organizational practice. For example, human resources. There is also this quote that people sometimes say that in some organizations, we, we hire for competence and we fire for character. So some of our partners and some of our certified leadership character practitioners actually, certified by Ivy, they have implemented character in human resources. So selection, incorporating character there. Promotion, incorporating character as one of the factors. Performance management, incorporating character as one of the factors. Culture development, incorporating character as part of the values and norms of an organizational culture. Other areas are EDI, and we will be able to talk more about that with our panel, risk management, strategy, purpose, communications. As character develops in individuals and teams, the impact is in operational excellence, well-being, and key performance indicators. Character, as our dean mentioned earlier, character is also the fuel for purpose-driven organizations. Purpose-driven organizations take a broader look at the impact they have in the world. It's the why of what they do. Leader character act, acts as an anchor for purpose in how purpose is formulated, how it is interpreted, how it is applied on a day-to-day -day basis. A purpose-driven leader invigorates employees about the cause they serve, generate meaning in employees about what they do, and demonstrate why what they do matters and, and how to serve the common good. 
Uh, purpose and character are needed in leaders everywhere, in any profession. That's why we're so excited again eh, about the creation of this certificate that will be available, as our dean mentioned, to all students at Western, including our affiliate colleges. And we're excited to um, help to solve the greatest problems in the world, as Mona mentioned, which do need interdisciplinary conversations and cognitive diversity, people who are think differently but are able to talk together. Those are two skills. Think differently and be able to talk together and in order to um, solve the challenges, the grand challenges that we face. We will hear more, and you have heard already a little bit about leadership under fire, but you will hear more during our panel. But as everybody has mentioned so far, it is an award-winning experiential program that allows the students to develop character and test their character during the program, and also exposes them to crucibles of leadership in a very intense way. And as Connor said, you know, you, those uh, stick, stick uh, even after the program has finished and, and time has passed. The final part of the gift is a powerful outreach tool, and I know Mona is very excited uh, about it, and I have met some of the partners that I, we are happy to work with in creating this important tool. As Mona mentioned, a lot of the leaders who are not usually exposed or have the opportunity to be part of leadership development are part of small and medium enterprises. With BIMO support, we will create a resource that will distill principles of purpose-driven leadership and leader character to small and medium-sized businesses, owners, and managers. And this tool will be disseminated both by Ivy, by Western, and by BIMO. And at this point, it's time to start our panel. So I will invite uh, Paul Carroll and Janine Pereira to join me so that they can share with us their experience implementing character leadership. Janine is the Director of Talent Development at Ernst & Young Canada. She leads a team of consultants to plan and execute learning practices that build high-performing teams, increase employee engagement, and grow leadership competencies. She has extensive expertise in diversity and inclusion and is passionate about fostering an environment of belonging in the workplace. In 2008, Janine received the Ernst & Young Rosemary Messi Award in the Rising Leader category, an internal award recognizing inclusive leadership. In 2014, she received the Ascent Manual Life Mentor of the Year Award. Janine is a member of the Institute's Leadership Council an executive in residence at the Ian Oinatovich Institute for Leadership and a certified leader character practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> and let me introduce you also to Paul. Paul Carroll is the head of global banking and markets, business continuity and operational resilience at Scotia Bank, while also being the president of Pathfinder Leadership Associates. Over the past eight years, Ivy's Institute for Leadership has collaborated with Pathfinder Leadership Associates to host the Ivy HBA and MBA course, Leadership Under Fire. As noted, this course and the students who take it will benefit from today's gift. Paul earned his MBA at Ivy. After he retired, after 24 years of military service, including 12 years in Canada's premier counterterrorism and special operations unit, Joint Task Force Two. He serves as co-chair of the Scotiabank Veterans Network and is a founder of the Blackstone Association, a non-for-profit that supports special operations veterans. He also serves as an executive in residence for the Ian O. Natovich <laughs> Institute for Leadership. Thank you. Janine and Paul, first question, go over here. Tell us about your leadership journey. What sparked your interest in character leadership? Maybe I'll just step back and tell you a little bit about who I am, because I think that makes a big difference in uh, my leadership journey and why character is so important. Uh, I um, am born from refugee parents who came to Canada um, and I was born shortly after. Uh, I'm also an ethnically diverse working mom of daughters, um, and I went to an all-girls high school. And so inclusive, inclusiveness, diversity, equity, really important to me. So I recently built my purpose, um, and my purpose is to empower people to lead inclusively so that everyone can courageously contribute their unique strengths. 
And so in order to really live out my purpose, I found the character leader framework so powerful. So powerful because I think back to when I started my leadership journey, I became a CPA and I was very focused on my technical skills. As I moved forward in my career, moving into HR, managing a team, I was more focused around developing my leadership skills, my managing people skills, um, and understanding strategy. And what the character framework did for me, I worked very closely with a coach. Um, his name was Trevor Wilson as I was transitioning. And he was focused on the human equity advantage and talked a lot about becoming a more equitable and inclusive leader. And in that, um, he was really trying to get at the importance of human skills. When I saw the character leader framework, I was like, those are the skills. That is exactly what's going to help us become more inclusive, more equitable, <coughs> and simply better leaders. I found it really articulated the words that I couldn't put my finger on. And today I find that that framework really helps me in my decisioning as I move forward and you know, to continue to work on my leadership. For me, it began when I joined the military in uh, my early 20s and I hadn't really spent any time thinking about leadership in a meaningful way until I, uh, I put the uniform on. And even as a private soldier, you know, very, uh, low on the uh, the food chain, uh, leadership was uh, part and parcel of everything that we talked about, everything that we did. And even though there was no appointment, you know, I wasn't in charge of anybody, there was an expectation that at all levels you would manifest leadership. So that leadership followership dynamic became uh, a really important part of my DNA early on. Um, so as I kind of grew in uh, rank and responsibility in the military, um, through my 20s, I kind of had this foundational stuff, the Canadian Armed Forces uh, 10 Principles of Leadership, and it was a really useful tool, and it served me uh, in many ways through my 20s. By the time I got in my 30s, I started you know, doing a bit more um, you know, research in addition to the leadership training I was getting through the military uh, development programs. It dawned on me that there was, a, there was a deficiency there. I couldn't put my finger on it, uh, but I knew there was another framework uh, that I needed. So. In my 30s, I'm now starting to question my own BS. You know, like, who, who am I as a leader and, you know, what, what more can I do? Um, so then by the time I'm in my late 40s, enter uh, Ivy, and it, it came at a, a, a perfect moment where this, this framework presented itself, and it was the perfect addition to the tools that I had been using for so long. And the penny really dropped um, with the, uh, the, we talked about temperance earlier, for all of my failures in, as a leader in the military, I can draw all of them back to temperance. And it doesn't mean it was just because I was angry. Sometimes that was a factor and I wasn't making uh, you know, great decisions or treating people as well as I should have. But also extremes of, um, of humor, you know, a lot of career limiting moves by not being temperant with you know, humor. So the framework was, was very, very useful. And it allowed me to do this deeper dive into what it means to be a character-based leader. If I'd only had this, you know, in, in 1996. So better late than never, but so that's where we are today. So this is a question for both of you. The theme today is character as your competitive edge. So tell us in your experience, how has character been a competitive edge either for yourselves or how have you seen it a competitive edge for others or, or, or for organizations? So, so I work in, I lead talent development and learning uh, at EY. And uh, we brought together a number of leaders. Uh, we started, we brought them together um, when you had the 10th year anniversary of the Institute. And at first it was an opportunity to say, uh, hey, like this is a great conference, you know, uh, why don't you come? It, it was a, like a perk. Um, but it ended up being uh, so much more than that because each of the partners, uh, new partners that we had made that had attended the conference came back and said, you know, I think this could make a big difference not only to me as an individual, but in our organization. Um, and what we, we did was we took the, we took the partners through the self-assessment um, they had a debrief and they could pinpoint their development points. And 
and at a professional services firm, they could see how judgment was so important and that we could use this framework to be much better leaders in um, you know, our own professional judgment uh, and bringing those virtues and values into the organization. And from there, we started to look at uh, not only the partners and the people in leadership position, but how do you bring that throughout the organization? How do you change the culture? We started to build more awareness sessions. Um, I have a few colleagues that are here um, and they've helped to uh, use the framework uh, to you know, build um, awareness sessions for those in various levels. And now even in our Thrive Academy, our interns are getting this awareness. Um, and I think that from a competitive edge point of view, we are going to have much better decision making in our risk management. We're going to have better decision making um, in the talent space um, when we look at succession planning. Um, you know, building this framework in to be able to determine are those the kinds of people we want in our organization? Are those the kind of people we want to promote in our organization? Do they have strong character? Um, and what's the difference that that can make? For all of us. Along those lines, you know, that uh, being able to rely on character, when I think back to my time in the military, one of the beautiful things about special operations is that because there's a very intense selection process, so think about your um, uh, Navy SEAL Hell Week, it's not quite like that, much less water, um, but it's, <laughs> it's an opportunity to kind of assess people really in a crucible moment as to their character. Now, seven to ten days is not a long time, but it gives you a sense of uh, somebody because you really do peel the onion. But then there's a year-long training course which is still part of the selection process and the character element in addition to the shooting and the parachuting all the stuff you might imagine that is critically important. So in the military you talk about performance objectives. There's these criteria that you have to pass and there's kind of little subtests in it. Performance objective 101 is the attributes of an assaulter. That's the, 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 the name for the people that kick doors and go left and whatnot. And if you fail to manifest those attributes, those, those elements of character, you'll be removed from the program. It does not matter how good a shot you are. You could be the best tactically proficient person in the world. If you don't fit that model of, of, of character, you're gone. I was invited back to a graduation ceremony for one of the more recent courses uh, last year, perhaps two years ago. And uh, he's actually a member of the, the PLA uh, mentor family. He was running the training. And uh, he says, yeah, we had to kick a guy off the course two days ago. So he had spent a year of his life being beasted, did not manifest. And I'm sure there was more than one instance. But the second to last day before graduation was removed from the program because character is so important. So what's the competitive advantage there? Well trust, agility, etc. Um, I was often sent uh, away, as were many other folks, with your orders being nothing more than go forth and do good things. Because situations were ambiguous, it was crisis in different parts of the world, but because you could count on people, their character, just as a foundational tool, they could go into chaos and you knew, or you had a, a very good probability, they were going to make good decisions because it was viewed through a character lens. So character becomes a competitive advantage because it, it allows you to move quicker, you know, act faster, and, and thrive in ambiguity. And even if you don't get it quite right, you know, a well-intentioned mistake you know, through the lens of a, a character framework like that, that's different. So the competitive advantage really means you can, well, to quote Stephen Covey, you know, move at the speed of trust. And I think that is huge. Janine, given your passion for EDI, we always say that character supports EDI, but at the same time, EDI initiatives test our character and also develop our character. Tell us a little bit more about how uh, the character work has helped you uh, or has uh, been a part of your EDI work. Um, so I mentioned uh, my purpose, right, to uh, you know, lead inclusively uh, and, and also empower others to lead inclusively. And um, with the EDI framework, uh, you know, I, I go back to um, leadership is a choice. You know, I remember Simon Sinek saying this and uh, leadership is a choice. It's not a rank. Um, it's not a position. Uh, and I, Gerard always always told me that leadership is not a position. It's a disposition. 
And you have to have the disposition to lead in the environment around EDI. Um, and one of the things that's really important is to challenge the status quo. And how are you going to do that in the right way? And I found that the uh, character framework gives you the courage. It gives you that wording around the courage and the drive to challenge uh, what isn't right, uh, to challenge um, the difference, challenge for difference, uh, look for um, you know, what you want to see uh, to be more equitable. And I think that the accountability, also a part of that framework, does that as well, and justice. And yet I also think that the humility and humanity are there because if you have that drive and courage to challenge, you also have to have that temperance to challenge appropriately. You have to have that humility to understand the power that you have and how are you going to engage others in the conversation. So I found the, the framework gives you the piece that's important in inclusion, which is to be more open-minded, to be flexible, to be agile, to understand what it's like to be in someone else's shoes using humility. Um, and the other piece is that as we grow in power, as we become leaders at higher levels, often that power will squash our ability to be inclusive. And so we need to continue to look at that framework um, and to be open-minded, to be humble, um, to be human with others and not let that courage and drive take over um, and, and make us less inclusive as we move up in power. Well said. <laughs> Paul, tell us more about Leadership Under Fire. Why, what, what inspired you to create a, this, this class and this organization, Pathfinder? I inherited um, the foundation of Pathfinder. It was started by two, uh, the original founders, uh, graduates in the early 80s of Harvard and Ivy, respectively. And what they saw when they were going through their programs is that the leadership was purely theoretical. There was no stress testing it. And coming from military backgrounds, which both of them did, they saw that as a bit of a gap. So they said, you know, one day we'll, we'll look to try and rectify that. So fast forward, they've done well for themselves. Um, I think they approached uh, Ivy. There was um, some connections there. The program was developed uh, in the early stages, I want to say, um, 2013, 2014. And uh, essentially, it was subcontracted to the Canadian Armed Forces. So the students went up to Base Meaford, Base Borden, and they were put through like a, a crucible, but very much focused on military skills. Uh, as you can imagine, if that's what you're trained to do, that's what you're going to teach. And uh, while I'm, I'm glad that I know how to, you know, make my way through a minefield with a bayonet, it's not really a practical skill for most people. <laughs> so let, let, let's not spend a lot of time on that, or uh, field improvised fishing hooks, etc. So well-intentioned, but they, they saw that there was room to grow. So around that time, as uh, was mentioned off the top by Sharon, a uh, buddy of mine, also a veteran, uh, we were doing our EMBA together, and uh, we were approached by the founders, could you come and help us uh, you know, tweak this a little bit more? So we applied more of a business lens to it, uh, made it uh, more applicable and, and relevant to the, uh, the, the participants. Um, and it was exciting for me because I was still in uniform doing my EMBA, didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. And this gave me something entrepreneurial to kind of you know, chew on as I learned uh, all the, the, the business uh, theories and, 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 and tools and whatnot. But it also resonated with me because of all the jobs I did in the military, the single most important and enjoyable uh, one that gave me such a tremendous sense of purpose was being the chief instructor for my former military unit, responsible for all individual training, including all the leadership training. Um, and, you know, all the, you know, sexy army stuff that you see, that's all great, but it is fleeting. What mattered to me, and just hearing Connor speak, you know, and really brought tears to my eyes, because that's the stuff that, that matters uh, to me and to all the mentors, making these differences or helping to make differences and improving uh, in leadership. So the, the, the program morphed a little bit based on its uh, original uh, concept, which was sound. Um, and, and when we take the participants through this, this dip, we, we bring them in, we psychologically dislocate them. There's no military skills being taught, but there's a military theme. And, you know, Connor, you wave the flag of BS if I'm not telling the truth here. Uh, they get off the bus and they're like, 
like, where do we come from? We didn't tell them where they're going. They go to this austere uh, compound, and there's no yelling and screaming, but there's a lot of, like, poker faces. And, you know, if you can imagine some of these folks, they really perfected the stink eye. So when these, <laughs> these students come off, they're like, oh, what's going on here? And we put them through a bunch of things. And I like to describe it as it's not a safe space that we create. It's a benignly dangerous environment where they can go and be stress tested. They can take the theory that is so critically important. And now like, like well, when I'm, when I'm no longer warm, dry, fresh and fed, you know, what happens now? Peel that onion. And of course we have missteps. Programs designed to do that. And the, part of the reason that we've selected the mentors we have is because they're willing to be vulnerable and share their own missteps. Right? None of us gets this right 100% of the time. It's a journey of, you know, a thousand miles and it never really ends because the horizon keeps moving. So the, the Pathfinder program came from a identified need to do better when it comes to leader training, make it more experiential. Uh, we apply a business lens so that it becomes relevant to the, uh, the participants. Um, but as I said, it is not a safe space. It is a place where we really stress them. But remember, we're doing everything that they're doing as well. Like when they don't eat, we don't eat. When they don't sleep, well, we sleep less. Um, <laughs> and, and that's important because it is leadership by example. And then when we have our own character failings, well, guess what? We get to share that with the students as well. Thank you for sharing those experiences. One more question. We talked about the myth that character, you know, is developed by age five. Um, and, and we, you know, we tell people in the Institute and, and to our students, we use the phrase that says, who are you uh, becoming while you are busy doing? You know, this idea of every day we can work on our, on, on our character. We are busy, 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 but who are we becoming? Are we becoming more humble or less humble, more courageous or less courageous? So we emphasize the day-to-day -day opportunity to develop character. Tell us what in your experience you have seen are effective ways to, uh, to work on this muscle, on the muscle of character. I think that, you know, you talk about the stress test. Uh, I think that COVID was <laughs> quite the stress test um, on our character. Um, and, you know, a way that I, I'll tell about my personal experience. Um, I did the self-assessment and I learned that transcendence was something I really had to work on. Um, and I think when I got into that stress environment, I was able to grab the character framework and say, you know, who am I going to be during this environment? Um, and while we're busy doing, what's the impact I want to make along the way? We didn't know how long it was going to last, but it was going to be a journey. Um, and it wasn't really about the outcome. So I looked back and, and I was leading a team of about 40 people and I thought, I can't be the person who just shares infor information. I actually have to be the person who can be more inspirational. So I needed to be um, inspire and not just inform. Um, I needed to create that vision, that way forward for our people, something they could go after in this uh, time of ambiguity. Um, I needed to consider their well-being. So trying to talk to each of my leaders regularly, empathizing with them, using that humanity. Um, and then together, collaborating to build the operational agreement that we were gonna have to have during this environment, it was gonna be completely different than where we had ever been before. And so I look at every decision we make, who we wanna be, um, and I love Mary always tells us that uh, it isn't about the outcome as well. It's not just about the outcome, it's the journey along the way, the decisions you make, the impact you make on every individual. Um, and that's how I continue to work on my um, development. I, you know, I, I do think that I really, you know, early in my career, it was like, well, you have character, or you don't have character. Hmm. But this framework really, um, you know, came came to fruition during that time and said, no, it's really like I got to practice this, and I got to build the strength in the areas where I don't have it, and I got to make sure that you know I don't overdo one versus the other. At the risk of pandering to um, the, the client in the room, the, the the framework has been a tremendous game changer for me. If I was to compare Paul Carroll today with Paul Carroll to ten years ago, um, I am a better father, better husband, 
a uh, better driver. Uh, well, I'm a more compassionate driver. I mean, I'll be a better driver, tactically. Um, yeah, better volunteer, et cetera. And the framework, uh, it, it is forefront to helping me become that better person. And there's a virtuous circle with the uh, participants because when you see the, uh, the participants go through their own uh, developmental uh, stage and they start feeding off one another, they're very example. And it's typically what I notice most is um, HBA and MBA students showing up on these uh, uh, events, these crucibles, uh, they certainly don't lack drive. That, that, that is not a factor. What we do see is them becoming more humble. You know, the, the, the cup, you know, that may have been theoretically filled when they showed up, the cup of knowledge, it gets emptied. And then we all start to realize that, yeah, this is the journey that never ends. Um, so that humility becomes a, a, a very important aspect. Uh, the humanity, they're in a competitive environment. I mean, I won't get into the details of, you know, how we structure the program, but it's four teams and they're vying for rewards that will allow them to feed themselves that allow them to like get extra clothing because they may spend a night out in the cold uh, and the wet and the rain. Uh, so there is a, a real need for them to harness drive. But what we see is as we start to have these conversations and they start feeding off one another, that it's not just what they do, it's how they do it. And that stuff starts to, to bubble up. Now we start doing the mentoring and uh, coaching at the, uh, the front end, but by the end of the four or five days, the students are doing it themselves. They're catching each other and like cueing off good examples of character and also calling out bad examples uh, of, of character. So it becomes internalized and that's what I you know, hope carries on in the fullness of time. Uh, so that virtuous circle, when you see, you can't help but want to be a better leader yourself. And uh, yeah, again, Sharon, don't take this wrong, but many of the mentors have said that they would actually teach the program for free it is so, it is so powerful <laughs> on the back end because of, as I said, of that virtuous circle. So as much as the students, uh, participants get something out of it, so too do the, uh, the mentors. Thank you. I want to thank our fantastic partners in, in, and panelists for sharing their experiences. And I'm going to invite our dean for closing remarks. Well, I hope you found this to be a very engaging discussion. I, I know I took a lot out of it. Thanks, Paul and Janine, for sharing the practitioner lens on leader character and how you employ leader character. And um, before I close, I just wanted to give one additional shout out again to BMO for the work. I hope you've got a sense of what this work does and what this work means to Ivy and how we deploy it in the community and how we deploy it with our students. We couldn't do it without the support of um, generous, generous philanthropists, and I really want to thank BMO for really stepping up here and uh, funding a lot of the activities that we were just talking about and really thinking about how we truly serve the, and grow the good, I'm getting that right, grow the good, and transform the status of purpose-driven leadership. So thank you very much again, Mona and the BMO team. And just before we end, I'd like to ask Mona to come on up here and Alan as well. And we're going to uh, give a gift to BMO for the work that they did. Congratulate. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I can come too. You get a hug too. Yes. <laughs>